Hello everyone, in this PMHEL video we're going to look at part of the Year 12 ACID base topic on buffers. Buffers are a part of this topic that are done particularly badly, especially in the WACE exams. Students seem to really struggle with this concept. Fundamentally though, they are an application of equilibrium. So we take the concept of a weak acid conjugate base and we apply it in an equilibrium context. And all you really need to do is look at how the system responds to the addition or subtraction of one particular component to the system. So hopefully this PowerPoint will um, make it a little bit easier for you, try and demystify it a bit. We'll also look at one um, example from the waste and show you a structured way in which you can answer these questions. One of the simple things that examiners will ask you about buffers is some definitions. And the first one is, is what exactly does a buffer do? Well, this is it. A buffer is the solution that resists change in pH when a small amount of acid or base are added. Now there's two really important things there. The first thing is that resists a change. It doesn't stop a change, but it resists a change. And that's because of the shift in the position of equilibrium. The second thing that's really important there is that it's small amounts of acid or base are added. Buffers have what's called a capacity, and we'll come back to that later. And they can respond when small amounts are added. So if you're looking at a definition and you don't say small, you're going to run into trouble because that's essentially saying that you can add as much acid or base as you like and it will resist the change. Well, no, that's not the case. Small amounts. The second thing is, what is a buffer exactly? A buffer is a weak acid and its conjugate base. Now, the difference between a normal weak acid conjugate base system and a buffer is that they're an equimolar quantity. So if you remember, in a weak acid, you have it reacting with water, ionizing, and it will form a small amount of conjugate base. The equilibrium heavily favours the reactants. So there's lots and lots and lots of the weak acid and a very, very small amount of the conjugate base and hydronium ions. How a buffer differs is that you've got high amounts of both. So therefore it has the capacity to react with both added hydronium or added hydroxide. In the normal situation, really it can only react with the hydroxide and neutralise that. It can't react with the hydronium. You could also make a buffer between a weak base and a conjugate acid in a similar way. So buffers are essentially artificially created equilibrium systems, where the concentration of the weak acid on one side and the conjugate base on the other are close to being equal. Now we can artificially create them in the lab really easily. So for example, we might take some uh, ethanoic acid. Now that's not a buffer, but if we can get some sodium ethanoate, some crystals of that ionic solid, and dissolve them, in the acid, then we can create a buffer solution. Buffers can be made in natural systems, usually because of the presence of one or two particular substances. So for example, in a lake, the rocks of the lake bed can contribute ions to the, the uh, water in the lake and create a buffer system. This diagram just simply explains that. So in the big box, we have water molecules, they're the ones that are faded. We've got ionised acid molecules, in other words, the conjugate base by the pink circle, and the original weak acid, which is the pink and blue symbol, and we've got approximately equal amounts of each. Now we'll go into more detail about how they work a little bit later in this presentation, but essentially what happens is that if you add hydronium or acid, it reacts with the conjugate base and forms more of the weak acid molecules, so it pushes it towards the weak acid molecules. Now because we've got so much conjugate base, it means it's got a great ability to do this. You do make more weak acid molecules, but because they're not ionizable, because of the way that weak acids work, there's little effect on the pH. So we essentially we add acid and the acid is consumed. Same thing with base. If we add base, more acid in the base reacts with the acid and reduces it. The equilibrium shifts and remakes the acid that was used to neutralize the base. And in the end, you have very little change in pH. What we need to do when we answer these questions is think about our equilibriums and apply collision theory to predict and explain how a system changes when we add acid or base to it. If you use the same skills that you apply in the equilibrium topic to a buffer, you'll get the answers right every time. Now we should remember to use collision theory, that's really quite important. A lot of people try and use Le Chalier's principle, which is for predictions only, 
But when we're doing collisions, we need to make sure how did the collisions in the reaction change? Therefore, which rate was changed? When we change collisions, we change a rate, and usually it's one or two of them. Hopefully it's just one, and we can make that explanation nice and clear. So here's an example. We've got an ethanoic acid and a phenoate ion buffer. Here is the equilibrium. This is called a hydrolysis equation, so it's a reaction with water. And it's the same equation that you would draw to demonstrate bronsted lowry behaviour of a weak acid. So we have a weak acid, we have water here, hydronium, and ethanoate ions. The difference with the buffer is that there is a lot more of this than there would be in a normal weak acid solution. So this is the conjugate base. So how does it work? Added acid. The concentration of hydronium ions increase. They go up. This will cause more collisions between particles on the product side of the reaction. Therefore, the reverse rate will overtake the forward rate. More reactants are consumed, and the net result is that almost all of the added hydronium ion is consumed. pH essentially remains constant. Now this only works because there's lots of those CH3, CWO minus ions present. They would not be there in a normal ethanoic acid solution. Of course, reacting with the added hydronium reduces the ethanoate ions that are there. That comes into something called buffer capacity, which I'll get to shortly. If we look at base, there's a number of ways to answer this, but I feel this is the simplest way. The added base will consume the hydronium ions in this equation here by neutralising them. That means the collisions between the product particles decreases. The forward rate is unaffected and overtakes the reverse reaction. As the reverse reaction slows down, the forward rate overtakes it and the hydronium ions are replenished. So those that were taken out by neutralising with the hydroxide are therefore replaced. Net result is the pH is essentially constant. Now we know we can't completely replace what was taken, but it's so close because of the high concentrations of the two components, the weak acid and the conjugate base, that the pH essentially remains the same. Of course, this will also rise the effect. Now, the extent to which a buffer can resist changes in pH does, of course, depend on the amount or concentration of the weak acid and the conjugate base. Once the components run out, then the buffer will no longer work. The extent to which a buffer will function is known as the buffer capacity. This is the extent to which a buffer can resist changes in pH by absorbing the extra hydronium that's added or extra hydroxide that's added. It depends on two main things. The first thing is the relative concentrations of the weak acid and the conjugate base. Now what this means is that in a normal weak acid conjugate base system, you've got lots and lots of weak acid and a tiny bit of conjugate base. In a buffer, they're approximately equal, so let's say 1 to 1. Normally it'd be something like 1 to 0 0.0000001. The best buffers are 1 to 1, but 1 to 0.8 will work, 1 to 0.5 will work. But a buffer wants to resist both acid and base. So if one side is too big, it's favouring that side. Okay, so we want it equal. The other thing is that if it's actually high, so a, for example, a 0.1 0.1 scenario, so 0.1 mol per litre uh, acid, 0.1 mol per litre conjugate base will work. But a 1 to 1, 1 mol to 1 mol will work better. So the more particles there are to react, the more it will work. Now, there are a number of buffers that are artificially created, but there are also some famous biological ones as well. Biological buffers are important in our body because a lot of biological reactions are catalyzed by enzymes. And the enzymes uh, have a specific shape. Now when we do organic chemistry later on in the year, you'll know that enzymes are made from proteins and proteins are made from amino acids. And amino acids have a basic component and an acid component. So if the pH changes, then what happens is the function of the amino acid changes. So for example, they could be exhibiting iron dipole interactions, you add too much hydrogen or take some away and it changes it to a dipole-dipole to an ionic interaction, for example. So things change 
which means the shape changes. If the shape changes, the, sub, the uh, enzyme doesn't function. If you remember back to year nine science when you're looking at the lock and key mechanism, essentially if the pH is wrong, the lock changes. If the lock changes, the key won't work. So it's really important that the pH is kept at the right level. Now in our blood, the blood needs to have a pH of about 7.40 plus or minus 0 0.05. If it falls outside of this range, um, cell membranes, enzymes can't function, um, protein structures can change, and essentially it can be fatal. So your blood uh, pH needs to be between 7.8 and 6.8, so that if you took a sip of lemon juice, for example, your blood pH doesn't completely go acidic. So if you had things, um, and exercise can call this acidosis, alkalosis in your blood, so you want to make sure that your blood pH stays the same, so the buffers function is really, really important. In our blood, we have a um, carbonic acid, hydrogen carbonate buffer system, and the carbonic acid is formed from the CO2 that's produced as part of our ref, um, respiration, and the CO2 reacts with water to form hydrogen uh, carbonic acid. A bit more of that comes into the um, ocean acidification topic, that sort of process, how that works. In that particular buffer system, the carbonic acid is the weak acid, and the hydrogen carbonate ion is the conjugate base. And here is your buffering reaction. And it works exactly the same as I showed you for the ethanoic acid, ethanoate ion. So always write your buffer equations as a hydrolysis equation like this, which is a reaction with water. There are some varying ways you can do that if you look in different textbooks. But this way you can never go wrong. Keep it consistent. Knowing one way to do something is far easier than doing lots of different ways. Acid plus water. Show that the acid donates the proton to the water, forms hydronium, and there's your um, conjugate base. Keep it simple. Buffers are also used to calibrate pH meters. We can make a buffer to a very specific pH value. To use any meter, we need to calibrate it. So we might have a low pH and a higher pH. And do a calibration curve. Now we're dipping probes in and out, we're rinsing probes when we put them in and out. If they weren't buffers, they would wildly change the pH. And we don't want that. We want the buff we want the calibration to be re reliable over a long period, so we use a buffer. We don't have to go into the maths of how, how that's work. Um, we used to show it as an extension, but we won't do that at the moment. Here's a waste style question about how a buffer works. Buffers have been in every recent waste paper. They follow a standard model, as shown in the next slide. Often, you know, they might say you add an acid, but the next year they'll say you add a base. One, thing, one year they'll say added to water. Another year they'll say added to a, a PA uh, system where there is no buffer. So it depends on how they wish to word it. But they're generally not done well. And mastery of this style of question will give you an edge, always, over the other students. Style question. Given this buffer system, so you have a weak acid plus water, conjugate base, hydronium, explain why a small change of pH is observed in this buffer solution when a small amount of sodium hydroxide is added, compared to adding a similar amount of sodium hydroxide to a system that's not a buffer. Now, often they say such as plain water. How do we answer this? Use a very clear system. Please do not waffle. Keep it nice, clear, and clinical. First of all, state what changed. Hydroxide ions are added to the system, and they are removed or neutralized by a reaction with the hydronium. So hydronium plus hydroxide forms water. And there is our buffer equation. You could also use arrows and do a diagram, so you could write this equation here, this one here, and then you could have an arrow going down, because bases consume hydronium by neutralization. Explain, how does the equilibrium respond with the collision theory focus? This causes collisions between the products to decrease because I've removed hydronium, and the reverse rate slows. The forward rate, which is unaffected, overtakes the reverse rate, and you make more products. State what changes. The hydronium lost in the neutralization reaction is therefore replaced, and there's a net negligible net change in pH. So those three points are really important. This, this question would be worth about four marks normally. Now the fourth mark is what is often forgotten, and that is to contrast to the other system. And you need to have some statement that says, well, I recognize that when OH is added to a non-buffer solution, there's no weak acid species or conjugate base species for it to react with. So therefore, 
the ph is significantly changed.